I've always been interested in creating works that you have to enter into in order that you are experiencing them in a sensory way, that all the senses are, are activated ideally. And then you're able to draw on your own encounters with material or with form, um, drawing on that lived experience in order to make sense of what you're now encountering, which has a feeling of, of the familiar but can't be placed in the context. So when I started this process of trying to think what an archive would be in relation to my own practice, um, it became quite apparent quite quickly that what was missing was the sense of the experience of the work. You feel quite vulnerable as an artist, so you're not really sure what you think of the work at that time, even for the duration of the show, because it's, it's maybe only a month or two. And so relying on, on the memory of it then becomes quite important what it felt like, the mood of the space. And so to try and reconnect with people that had experienced the work, um, that I knew I would be able to have interesting conversations with curators and fellow artists um, that understand my practice, then that seemed like a, a kind of positive way of trying to sort of fill in those gaps that photographic documentation leaves. And then I spent, what was that, six weeks in a heat wave with it, which is pretty extreme circumstances. Um, so first of all, we had the opening week, which was like chaos. And you were the person sitting calmly crocheting. And, you know, in my memory, it was this kind of like silken thread. I, you know, that way that I almost don't want to know that it was anything else. It, you know, it was this, in my mind, sort of magical thread. And you were making this thing that I was like, amazed half that you were doing it like in my memory the day of the opening it was probably not quite that, that last minute probably was <laughs> <laughs> but um but that you were so calm and doing that and so sort of confident and competent about the thing that you were doing so it was your your understanding of the of the task and the process and the materials that you could be doing that in that situation it kind of worked to our benefit that we were doing this during the COVID pandemic and needing to do this with the, with the format of Zoom because it meant we could just record and then transcribe these, um, these conversations that then allows you to then create some kind of written document as well um, that then I could add images to. And so what I've developed out of these are a series of pamphlets that can then sit alongside the photographic documentation. I mean, it's sort of stating the obvious in a way, but that over time your memory dwindles and you start to forget these important connections with people and places that were made in such a intense kind of way at that moment in time in order to make a project. And so it was really important to be able to sort of reconnect with, with these people and places. What became evident through this process for me was a really strong sense that I had a responsibility to all the people who have provided me with the opportunities that I've trusted in my practice over time, from young artists to emerging artists to, to now, that they have given me the complete freedom to make the work that I wanted to make. And so what's been really wonderful with this project is being able to work with Marissa, who's making a film, you know, about the process of the work coming into being. So to be able to go and uh, document at um, the engineering company, Bar Night, that I've been working with for, for many years and to document working in the print studio um, and at Glasgow Sculpture Studios. Um, so, so the sense of how the different working environments um, influence the work that's made, the, the way that the, the atmosphere in these places, the, the tools, the equipment, um, how the materials behave and the, the, the scope and limitation that you have within any of these contexts that leads to the specific form of these works. 
what's really important is to document the process of the work coming together and the making that happens within the gallery space, um, which is quite unusual. Mostly artworks are brought into the gallery space as completed works. And so it felt really important to focus on that. It's actually quite good from the back because you really see the seams, so might not slip them all. The kind of unique nature of how that happens within my work um, and to document that started to spark ideas about more unconventional approaches to, you know, to how this archive would, um, would take shape. And so to be in control of that really allows you to work in much more playful and interesting, more dynamic ways. There's lots of images here of, uh, of ideas for the for all the different elements of the works. It kind of shows that, for me, there wasn't this definite division between drawing and sculpture. When you actually look back on this, um, I'm not really sure what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> You're going through this constant process of editing that then actually you might go back to later and think, oh, actually, I see that in a completely different way. So yeah, here's one from art school. So you can see how, you know, I've been incorporating material into drawings um, from way back then. Uh, you know, using actual hair and wax paper um, and these kind of recurring motifs. And then, so I suppose there's all this other aspect of the work to, that, that becomes part of an archive, which is to do with your research and, and somehow trying to document or catalogue um, all the things that have been influential. So whether that's places that you have been to, residencies, the influence of objects in museum collections, um, the banks of photographs that you take all the time that feed into ideas for the work to make it consumable and make sense. So you're not necessarily needing to um, preserve everything. And so one of the other things that are, is going to form part of the archive um, will be physical archives. So bringing together lots of um, objects, smaller objects, um, materials, printed fabric, so that there are these actual physical remnants of different works. So people can actually touch and feel and handle and, and get a sense of the sort of physicality of elements that, that were included in installation works. At particular points in that sort of trajectory of the time that I've been working, there's been this tendency to talk about my work and other artists' work in some kind of parallel way where you're looking at other influences and almost like an avoidance of actually talking about the work formally or descriptively. The emotional content, the sensory content, the physical effects on the body, the more ephemeral aspects, the intimate sexual themes that, that kind of run through the work. Um, they were kind of skirted around. But now looking back with hindsight and without the particular trends or focuses of, of particular times, then I can see what was kind of missing. And so this kind of mismatch that defines my practice between the conceptual and the kind of instinctive approach, I think at the time I really struggled with, but over time, I can see how I have just kind of come to terms with the fact that these things just um, interweave in a kind of awkward, messy way to create the work that I make. Because, you know, the work is about contradiction, it is about conflict, it is about ambiguity, it is about, you know, things misfitting. It's kind of sparked some kind of newfound confidence in the practice, you know, as a whole. And I've found it a really positive experience and I would recommend it to every artist to go through this process. You know, there is something in that 
you know, that appreciation of the opportunities that have been made available and all these, you know, really interesting contexts and wonderful people that you've connected with. I suppose it's a, the sort of collaborative elements that, that go into kind of conceiving and producing an exhibition.